Even if you spend years in Buenos Aires, there is always something new to discover. Which means that planning a trip to Buenos Aires, especially if it's your first time, can feel really overwhelming and you might not know where to start. So whether this is your first time in Buenos Aires, your second, your tenth, or you have family coming to visit and you don't really know how to start, this is the perfect 10 day itinerary for you. Now look, if you really don't wanna spend any time planning out your trip to Buenos Aires, I have this guide on the Thatch app. I've partnered with Thatch to make an extremely detailed Buenos Aires ultimate 10 day itinerary guide just for you. It has all the details you need. Everything is in here, so you don't have to do any extra guesswork or research. I will link that batch guide below in the description so you can find it easily. The itinerary starts on a Friday, and we're going to start in the neighborhood of San Telmo. Now, I really believe that the neighborhood of San Telmo needs two days. So we're gonna start this Friday, day one of the itinerary in San Telmo so you can see that chill side and have a chance to see some of the cool things in San Telmo without all the thousands of people around. Breakfast is at Casa Telma. It is a really cute little cafe on the corner with turquoise trim. Inside, it's a wonderful bakery full of fresh bread, delicious smells, really good breakfast options. This place is packed on weekends and it's really hard to get in without waiting in line, which is why I'm gonna take you there today on the first day when it's not crazy. After breakfast, wander the streets of San Telmo. There are cobblestone streets. It's a really cute, older, bohemian neighborhood with amazing old pre-colonial architecture and the neighborhood is known for antiques and vintage shops so you have tons to choose from. Along Calle Defensa you can even stop to see the Mafalda statues which is an old famous cartoon from like the 1970s in Argentina. Now just a block away from those statues is a museum called San Juan de Granados. It is one of my favorite tours in all of San Telmo and all of Buenos Aires. Now time for lunch we're gonna head over to Bar El Federal this is one of Buenos Aires' bares notables, notable bars. After lunch, spend the next several hours wandering around the neighborhood. You have a lot of options for museums, the Museo Moderno, or the History Museum in Parque Lesama, which is totally free. You can continue shopping at the vintage and antique markets, or you can relax in Parque Lesama, or just have a coffee at some of the really cute cafes in San Telmo, like La Poesia or Obrador. Now, after you spent a little more time wandering around and getting to know the neighborhood of San Telmo a bit more, it's time for dinner. And I'm really excited about this dinner because it is my favorite restaurant in all of San Telmo. It's a place called Atis Bar. The thing about Atis is it's really popular, so you might end up having to wait a bit. So it's Friday night, and the last thing on the itinerary today is a place called Mitos Argentinos. It's a really cool bar that plays live rock nacional, the national Argentinian rock. If this is my first video that you're seeing, hello, my name is Nikki, and I spent an entire year in Argentina, so I have a ton of videos both in Buenos Aires and around the entire country. So make sure that you subscribe and check out all my other videos because for sure you'll find other videos that will be really beneficial to you. Day two, Saturday in the Micro Centro. The Micro Centro is made up of two main neighborhoods, Montserrat and San Nicolás. We'll start the morning out in Plaza de Mayo. This is the main center of the city. In Plaza de Mayo, there are three main things to see. First, the one that opens the earliest is the Catedral, the Metropolitan Cathedral. The second thing in Plaza de Mayo is El Cabildo. You can see the history of Argentina, of Buenos Aires, you can see how they constructed the Cabildo, and from the balcony on the second floor there's a fantastic view of La Casa Rosada. And La Casa Rosada is the third thing in Plaza de Mayo. La Casa Rosada is the presidential house. It's like the White House of the US, La Casa Rosada, the pink house in Argentina. The only difference is that the president doesn't actually live here. After spending time in Plaza de Mayo, we're gonna head over to Calle Florida, Florida Street. This is a pedestrian street, so no cars. For lunch, we're going to a place right along Calle Florida called Guemes Gallery. You're gonna go to the elevators on the right side to the sixth floor, and there you can find a really cool rooftop bar. After lunch, we're going to head to Avenida 9 de Julio. This is the widest avenue in all of South America. It's 16 lanes wide. And right in the center is the Obelisco. 
You've probably seen the obelisco from many of the World Cup videos. That's where all the people gathered to celebrate. From the obelisco, we're gonna walk over to Teatro Colón, which is only about five minutes away. The Teatro Colón is an old opera house and it's still running and it's pretty incredible. They have English tours every day at 3 p.m. After your Teatro Colón tour ends, we're gonna head over to El Ateneo Grand Splendid. This is a bookstore that was previously a theater. They still have the stage set up, which is now where a cafe is. And there's about four levels, all balconies, where you can look down onto the bookstore. After Ateneo, we're gonna head over to Avenida Corrientes. On weekend nights, the traffic shuts down and it's only available to foot traffic. This street is known as the Times Square of Buenos Aires because it's lined with theaters. And you can find one of the most famous pizzerias in all of Buenos Aires, which is called Pizzeria Guerin. Personally, I don't love the pizza at Pizzeria Guerin, but I do suggest having dinner there tonight just because it is so famous so you can see what all the talk is all about. Day three, Sunday, we are going back to San Telmo, and this is for a very specific reason. Every Sunday in San Telmo, there's the Feria San Telmo, which is a market all along the entire length of Calle de Fensa, from Plaza de Mayo all the way until Parque de Sama. But before we get started on the market, we're going to have breakfast at a place called Yerba Buena. This is such a fantastic breakfast and brunch place. It's on a really cute street, they have really delicious fresh juices, which are not overpriced, and they have a ton of vegan and vegetarian options. After breakfast, now we'll head back towards Parque de Sama and down Calle de Fensa to stop and see all the different things at the market. So after you've spent several hours walking up and down Calle de Fensa, we're going to have lunch in Mercado San Telmo. There's tons of different eateries inside. There's tons of Argentinian choices in there as well. Or even if you're looking for something simple, there's great empanada stands. And if you want dessert, alfajores. After lunch and after you finish wandering around the market, I really want to take you to the Puppet Museum. Now. This is not super common or well known, and it's a little bit strange and a little bit creepy, but I really love it. It's a free museum, it's tiny, it's only two little rooms, and it's full of puppets from all over the world. The Puppet Museum is only open on Saturday and Sunday from three to six, and at 4.30, there's a children's puppet show. After the puppet show, you can do a merienda at one of the several little restaurants around Mercado San Telmo, or you can head straight to dinner. And for dinner, I recommend La Popular. It's back on the same street where you had breakfast at Yerba Buena. And if you like Milanesa, this is the place because the Milanesas are huge and packed with stuff on top. They also have pastas and salads and tons of things. The food is good. Now we're on to day four. It's a Monday. In Buenos Aires, Monday is not the best day to do a ton of things because so many things are closed, including even parks. So I've split this day up in between two neighborhoods, Chacarita and Palermo, to really maximize your time for the things that are the best on Mondays. We'll start the morning in the cemetery of Chacarita. You may not have heard of this cemetery because even though it's the largest in Argentina, it's definitely the lesser known after Recoleta. This cemetery is massive. And this cemetery is definitely not that well kept. And so it's kind of interesting because a lot of the windows are broken or the doors are broken to the mausoleum. So you can actually look down and see all the coffins and see stairs going down into the earth. For lunch, I recommend a place that's only a few blocks away from the Chacarita Cemetery, which is a place called Bar Palacio. It's a combination between restaurant and museum. After lunch, we're going to take the bus or taxi and go to Palermo. The first stop in Palermo is the Malba Museum. It's the Museum of Latin American Art. This museum is fantastic. It has two floors and a basement full of fantastic exhibitions. After the Malba, we'll head over to Hippodromo. The Hippodromo, or Hippodrome, is where they have horse races. And the horse races, coincidentally, normally happen on Monday evenings. It's totally free to enter and they often have food trucks and drinks and even if you're not paying attention to the horse races, the environment of the place is really fun. So I definitely recommend going there at least once on this Monday to see what it's like. Then for dinner, we're gonna head over to Arcos. 
It's just under a bridge where the train goes over and there's a row full of restaurants. And on weekends, it's really crowded, but there's tons of restaurants, there's tons of bars right there. And so it's a really cool and lively place to eat and you've got a ton of different restaurant options. If you're liking this itinerary so far, but you're thinking to yourself that you wish you had some more details to go along with everything, well, I highly suggest you download the Thatch app. The Thatch app is a great app for travel creators and people looking to travel. Travelers have created their own guides and itineraries based on personal experience so you know that everything is totally valid. I actually have several guides on Thatch for Argentina. Some are at a cost and some are totally free. But I recommend you download the app no matter where you're going because for sure there's a guide on Thatch for you. Day 5. Tuesday, we're going to spend in the neighborhood of La Recoleta. La Recoleta tends to be a bit of an upscale neighborhood. We're gonna start the morning off in the Recoleta Cemetery. Now, you're free to wander around through the cemetery and spend as much time as you want but I do recommend getting a guide. There's an English man named Simon who hangs out in front of the cemetery and he's been giving tours for like 15 years and so he really knows his stuff. After walking around a lot in the cemetery, you're probably starting to get a little bit peckish. So head over to Andra Bakery. It's the cutest bakery and it has the best scones ever. After Andra, we'll head over to the Museo Nacional de Bellas Artes, the Museum of Fine Arts. Once you exit the Museo de Bellas Artes, you're going to cross a bridge, and when you cross the bridge, you'll see the Facultad de Derecho, which was built with an architectural style in the mind of uh, Roman architecture. And then just beyond that is the Floralis Generica. The Floralis is a giant metal flower that actually closes at night and then reopens every morning. When you're ready for lunch, head back over the bridge and head to a place called El San Juanino. This is a traditional Argentinian restaurant for empanadas and they are so good. After lunch, head back over in the direction of the cemetery and just next to the cemetery is the Centro Cultural. You can enter totally for free and they have all these different rooms with art exhibits, they often have events going on, but usually it doesn't open until 2 p.m., which is why I'm recommending it in the afternoon. Once you leave Centro Cultural, just take a wander through all of the plazas and parks. There's about five right in a row. They have different statues with Argentinian historical figures. And then once you go around the parks, you'll reach the National Library. It's this massive concrete building that's created in this very modernist style, just with big concrete blocks. Head back over near the cemetery and have dinner at a restaurant called La Biela. And supposedly it's the spot that used to hold the first eatery or gastronomical center in Recoleta from like a hundred years ago. On day six, Wednesday, we're going to spend this day in the neighborhood of Congreso, which is technically Balvanera. So today I'm keeping everything really centered around the Plaza del Congreso and you won't have to do as much walking. So we're gonna start the day at around 11.30, 11.45 at the Congreso building. Every weekday, there's free tours of the Congress building at 12 o'clock or five o'clock in English. After the tour ends at Congreso, we're going to have lunch at El Ultimo Bodegón. If you don't eat meat, that's fine. They do have pasta dishes, but they have a ton of traditional food. They also have lunch specials. They have meat specials. So if you're with a group of people and you want to try the parrilla, this is a great place to do it. After lunch, we're going to cross the plaza to the other side to go to a place called Madres de la Plaza de Mayo. Now, if you've heard anything about the history of Argentina, you know about the military dictatorship in the late 70s and early 80s. Well, the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo started marching around the Plaza de Mayo wondering what happened to their disappeared children. So here in Plaza del Congreso is their center. After you visit the Museum of the Mothers of the Plaza de Mayo, we're going to walk just a couple minutes and on the right is a building called Palacio Barolo. This is one of the best tours in the entire city and you definitely need to book in advance. Then for dinner, we're gonna go just next door to a place called Dome Rooftop Bar. This is also a place where you should make reservations in advance. So the dome rooftop bar is lower than Palacio Barolo, but they actually can see each other. There's not quite as good views from the dome rooftop bar, but they're still pretty spectacular. Day seven, 
Thursday, we're going to spend between La Boca and Puerto Madero. If you want to have breakfast in La Boca, I recommend La Perla. After breakfast, spend a few hours walking around the area called El Caminito, where you're going to see a ton of brightly colored houses, you'll see a market with paintings, street performers, there's tons of little shops, you can buy souvenirs, there's little alleys that you can go into. It's definitely one of the most touristed areas of the city, so you don't want to spend like a whole day there, the morning is good, but it's definitely worth going. However, whenever I mention La Boca, I have to remind you that I got my phone stolen in La Boca, so make sure to keep an eye on all your valuables, your camera, your phone, your wallet, everything. Keep a really close eye on all your things. After you've wandered around El Caminito and the other main streets of the center of La Boca, head over to Fundacion Proa. Unfortunately, it opens at noon and no earlier, but it's a very cool modern art museum. After Fundacion Proa, head back to the center of the neighborhood and choose one of the many restaurants for lunch. One of the most popular is a place called La Vieja Rotisseria. It's definitely overpriced, like most restaurants in this neighborhood, but there is a live tango show. And if you care about football or Boca Juniors, you can go see La Bombonera, which is the stadium for Boca Juniors. After La Boca, we're gonna head over to the area of Puerto Madero. You can take a bus easily, or you can take a very short taxi ride as well. I suggest just walking along Puerto Madero. Both sides are full of restaurants and cafes, places just to have a beer in the sun. And then the most famous bridge on Puerto Madero is El Puente de la Mujer, the bridge of the woman. Keep walking along Puerto Madero until you reach Centro Cultural Kirchner, the Kirchner Cultural Center. This is a massive building that once was the post office and now is this huge cultural center. There's maybe six or seven floors and almost every floor is full of art exhibits and there are so many interesting things here. After the CCK, the Kirchner Cultural Center, we're gonna go just one block away to Trade Sky Bar. Reservations are absolutely required to get into Trade Sky Bar, but it is one of the best views of the city. We've made it to day eight, Friday, which we're going to spend mostly in the area, the neighborhood of Palermo. Today is very nature themed, so we're going to start out having breakfast at a place called Moshu Treehouse, which is created with recycled materials meant to make you feel like you're inside of a tree house. After Moshu, we're gonna head over to the Carlos Tai Botanical Garden. It's free to enter, it's not that big, but I do recommend spending some time wandering around. When you're inside, you really forget that you're in the middle of a city. Once you exit the Botanical Garden, we're gonna go just around Plaza Italia where you're gonna find the entrance to the Eco Parque. The Eco Parque is a long, thin park. And so we'll start at the bottom and make our way up to the top. And as we walk through, we can see so many animals. This used to be a zoo. And so there's remnants of the zoo left over. It's fun for children, but it's also really fun for adults. After we exit the Eco Parque, we're gonna go to the Japanese Garden. This is the only garden that actually costs money, but it's only 416 pesos, so it's like just barely over a dollar. When you go in the park, it's pretty small. It's not a massive garden, but it is a very traditional Japanese garden, so it'll have everything you expect to see in a Japanese garden. But my favorite thing in the garden is the Japanese restaurant, so we're gonna go there to have lunch. Once you finish lunch and wandering around the Japanese garden, we're gonna go to the last garden, which is called Tres de Febrero Park, and inside there's the Rose Garden. This whole park is incredibly manicured. There's a lake in the center, there's ducks, you can walk around, you can relax there, but you can also see the thousands of roses perfectly manicured. Once you're finished with the gardens, Head back to Palermo Soho, to the center. All around Plaza Serrano, in the heart of Palermo Soho, you can find tons of little alleyways with murals and painted walls everywhere. And there's a ton of bars and cafes and restaurants, so we're gonna stay in this area to have dinner. There are a ton of options, so you can choose whatever you want for dinner, or if everyone in your group wants to have something a little bit different, head to the Mercado Soho, 
which is like the Mercado San Telmo. There's tons of different options, and then you can all sit together to eat. We are on to day nine, Saturday, and because we now have gotten to know the city of Buenos Aires pretty well, we're gonna head just outside and go to an area called Tigre. This is where you can find the Tigre Delta. It's a ton of little waterways that go through. There's a whole community that lives there. And there are two main things to do in this area. One is to go to the Puerto de Frutos. It's not just a fruit market like the name might suggest. It's a massive market with a ton of goods, wicker being the most common thing that you can go there to buy. The second thing to do in this area is to take a riverboat cruise. There are several different companies, some charge more than others, so I definitely suggest going around and checking the price at each one. But they take you on a little boat cruise through the Delta, they'll tell you the history of certain things. My tour was in Spanish, you can ask if there's a tour in English, but unfortunately I think the majority of the tours are in Spanish. You'll probably spend the entire day out here at the Tigre, where you can have lunch and dinner, they have restaurants there, but if you do find that you have a little extra time, you can stop through San Isidro on your way back to the center of Buenos Aires because it's just a cute little town outside of Buenos Aires and there's tons of really cute restaurants and things like that. Day 10, Sunday, we have reached the very last day of the itinerary. So this is a great day if you wanna go back to places that you've missed before or that you wanna see more of. The city is pretty slow on Sundays, so this is a great day to wander around, go to parks. I recommend going to the Reserva Ecológica, which is at the end of Puerto Madero. In the Ecological Reserve, you can take a walk. There's a big loop, and you'll notice a lot of people go there for exercise. There's bike riding and running. And then there's also a park called Costanera Sur, which is like a walk along the water, and it's famous for all these little food trucks that have choripan. The other thing that I recommend doing on Sundays is going to Barrio Chino in the Belgrano neighborhood. Sunday seems to be the most active day for this neighborhood, so it's full of people. You can see the Chinese arch. There are tons of Chinese and Japanese restaurants. The atmosphere is really nice and light. There's people outside having a beer, drinking, eating. And this neighborhood has a ton of Asian supermarkets, which I love. And Sundays bring out street performers. So it's all around just like a very fun, positive atmosphere. And just like that, 10 days are over. If you want more details on this 10 day itinerary, I've got my blog post listed in the description below. As well, I've posted the link if you want all the details to this 10 day itinerary. You've got them there in the thatch guide. And if you're looking for free activities in the city of Buenos Aires, just click on this video here where you can find a ton of free activities. Why not?